Shalom, shalom to the family. Street baptism back with more beautiful wisdom that we believe comes directly from the Father through His Son, Yeshua Hamashiach, or Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, or Yahusha Hamashiach, whatever pronunciation you decide to utilize. It's no discrimination over here at Street Baptism because we deal with the Hebrew vehemently, meaning heavily, strongly. Um, so we understand that the pronunciation ain't something that we're going to receive in complete um, truth or purity right now, because as the nation of Israel, um, being the so-called black um, people, African-Americans, um, the, the descendants of the individuals involved in the diaspora via the transatlantic slave trade or the triangle trade and the sub-Saharan slave trade or the Arab slave trade according to prophecy and history we lost that privilege along with other privileges so we about to get straight into it um but first salak much love to the family um trying to follow in the steps of hamashiach and truth and sincerity but more significantly um and humility because you cannot receive truth without humility you can't understand sincerity without humility so we're gonna get right into it <clears throat> So like, here's the Gmail character. This is going to be another video um, concerning the Hebrew characters. It's not an extent video or series. This is just the basics of these Hebrew characters because these Hebrew characters have everything to do with what the Most High decided to utilize to make everything. And real quick, let me just go there. We're going to look at that real quick before we deal with the Gmail. <coughs> And any background noise, uh, forgive me in advance. Uh, besides that music, that music is very soothing and calming. Praise Yah. So this is what we're going to do right here. We're going to go right to the beginning. In Genesis or better sheet chapter one and verse three, it says, and God said. What did he say? Let there be light. And there was light. Now he said it. That's very important. He said let there be light and there was light so whatever the most high said is what was created now he wasn't speaking english he wasn't speaking spanish he wasn't speaking italian um he wasn't speaking arabic <clears throat> and he wasn't speaking um, um any other language besides uh the language that the uh foundation of the bible being the quote-unquote old testament was documented in even if somebody want to say the pronunciation ain't the same and it's not pure according to zephaniah 3 and 8 or 3 and 9 Agreed over here at Street Baptism. With that being said, he still, still utilized the um, Hebrew language <clears throat> to create everything. So this is why we deal with the Hebrew, because we stick with the, um, we're supposed to stick with the foundation. So he said, let there be light. And there was light. But now let's go into said real quick. The word said, right? It says, why yo mad? One second. So like. Okay, and Y is and, Yomed is he said, or this is a reference to something. Actually, here it says it's sequential and perfect. This is why it's important to deal with the Hebrew parsing so you can actually understand what you're reading. Sequential and perfect, what does it rep represent? Here's the definition. A sequential and perfect verb functions generally like a verb with perfect con conjugation, but it also connects to an earlier verb to form either a sequence of time or a sequence of thought. And in this case, He's creating light after the first two verses. So it's, it's in sequence as every other happening in this first chapter, at least, is in sequence as well. So it's a sequential and perfect and perfect verb based on the time that he said it, the time that we read it. So let's go into what this word actually means, though. The root is Ahmad. So you click the Strong's number of the word and Ahmad literally means let's go to the w wilhelm jacinius hebrew child lexicon and we haven't gotten into wilhelm jacinius and who he is yet but we definitely will praise god but what does it say what does it mean um it means it can mean to say it can mean to bear forth hence to bring light to interesting to bring light to the light that he created what else do we have here it says it can mean to say anything it could be a command this is still uh, what I want, right? Yes. But let's go back. Let's look at the Strong's. Strong's definitions. We went into St James Strong's already. Ahmad, it says to say. It can mean to say. Here in the Brown Driver Briggs lexicon, 
It can mean to utter, to say, to shoo, to declare, to shoo, important. Because when you speak words, you can't see words. In 2nd Ezra chapter 4, the Most High, by way of the angel uh, Uriel, he asked him, because of what Ezra was trying to figure out concerning the father, he asked him to shoo him the image of a voice. And Ezra said, I can't do that. But now it's saying that this word say can mean to shoo. Now, how can it mean to shoo? Because God said, let there be light. And then the light was manifest. And then we saw it. Praise God. So what we're about to do is go right back to the Gemel. This is what the Gemel looks like. And the Gemel represents literally a foot. And as y'all can see right here, you can see the bottom of the shin and at the back. And this is the Aramaic type or the uh, modern Hebrew type Gemel. But as y'all can see in the back is the heel. And in the front is the ball of the foot with the toe. So this, these are the most significant parts of the foot. Praise the father for his um for his beautiful language. It's crazy. But um, let's go here. So now we go back to this. And this is what the paleo, quote unquote, paleo or um, the pictograph Gmail looks like. And the picture comes with a meaning. As I said before, English characters don't have a meaning or a numeric equivalent. This numeric equivalent, as we know, the Aleph is one, the bait is two, and the Gmail obviously is three. And it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up until nine, all the way up until 10, Salak. And then from 10, it goes to 20, 30, 40, 50, et cetera, all the way up until the last character, tie, which is 400. But this is the Gamel, and it represents a foot. But what does it mean? It can mean, you go here. Here's the Gamel with the three, with the modern Hebrew script and the paleo script. It can mean a foot. It represents movement. It can also mean a camel, because in the ancient times, or in the ancient Near East and antiquity, and actually still today too, camels were a main uh, usage of transportation. Um, it could also represent pride. And actually my fault, I believe uh, Gimel, this, th these um, characters Gimel actually sounds like camel. G can be K. Um, the third character in the Hebrew character list is G, but G is related to K because where you make the sound at is somewhat the same. Praise the Father. So this Gmail can represent foot. It can represent a camel or movement, or it can represent a pride because that's a way in which people can move, uh, and we shouldn't. But that's what that's what we do. Here's the Gmail again, the Paleo, and these might look different every now and again. What else do I have? Okay, the Gmail right here. It can mean, um, and this is a, a, a writing that I had a sister write down for me. Praise Yah uh, from a, a video. That's a, it's a beautiful source. Um, Gimel or Gamal, Gam from the root Gam, which uh, means to gather or to walk or to carry. So this Gimel character represents movement. So when you think about your feet and you think about the doctrine of the word, you're talking about the way in which you move. You talk about uh, the path, the straight and narrow path that the Messiah talked about in Matthew chapter seven. Praise Yah. So this is what this Gimel character represents. This is the meaning behind it. And we want to utilize this information that we get concerning these Hebrew characters, we want to utilize it. We want to utilize these things practically in everyday life. So pay attention to your, the heel of your foot, the ball of your foot, the ankle, because I left out the ankle. These are important features of the foot. And this is the third character for a reason, because the foot is very significant as far as what we learn in the Bible. So with that being said, praise Yah and street baptism is out. Shalom.